Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here and to speak to you guys. I hope you guys are, are really enjoying the competition. I must say I am, but I also realize that I'm not 25 anymore. But anyway, we'll, we'll push past that. All right, so let's jump straight into it. So um, just a few things around what we have to cover today, what we're going to talk about. The views I, I express here are, are my own. It's not Heineken's views or anything like that. It's simply a reflection on sort of my journey and where I came from and what I experienced. All right. There's a lot of views um, that was inspired by a question I had with one of the universities when they came to visit the brewery when they asked, does university really prepare you for working life, you know, and what should you know? So I'm trying to convey those things that, that I experienced, but also um, what I experienced when we took on graduates and we took on trainees and some of the, the mistakes we made and also some of the things that we learned. Um, the points will know will most likely not be applicable right now, you know, because it's not the practical environment in which you find yourself in. But uh, do you take notes, ask a few questions. Um, one day, I'm sure you say you'll say, "I remember this from that top year at Intervarsity." You said something like this, so it must have been a little bit important. All right, um, I'm an exceptionally poor lecturer. I'm sure the people who do this for a living will cringe as I carry on. I apologize for that. But I want to have discussion, please. So if you have a question, please stop me, raise your hand, let, let's talk about it. That's where the richness um, of a process like this or a conversation like this will lie in. All right. So first of all, just a little bit about myself. Um, yeah, I started out at, uh, studying chemical engineering at the University of Pretoria. I finished there in around 2009. Um, then I did my IBD diploma uh, shortly after that. So I was working on the mines actually um, in Kimberley with the Beers Consolidated Mines, but I knew I'm in love with this brewing thing. Uh, uh, we did a third year course with Prof, uh, Prof Mike and we brewed our own beer and I realized this is, this is where I want to go, this is where I want to be. There's not a lot of beer in the diamond mining industry, so I started uh, studying afterwards. Um, finished my IBD around 2013, and then I also started my, my master's in brewing and distilling through Harriet Watt University, which I really enjoyed. That was, that was a fantastic course. And then later, you know, as one grows up and you realize you need to sort out this managing th management thing, I did my MBA with UCT specializing in executive management. Finished that a couple of years ago. So my ex uh, experience um, started as a process engineering trainee, uh, then eventually became a process engineer in the brewing department, looking at optimization, some projects and everything like that. Post that, uh, went into the brewing management role, firstly as an area manager, um, which was quite a shock, you know, from moving from a very technical sort of role into a management sort of role. And guys, that's, thing, uh, that's something that I'm sure each of you will experience in your life sometimes. When you enter the workplace, your results depend on everything that you touch. If you become a manager, your results depend on everything that you can't touch. It's a total mind shift. It's a total different way of looking at things. Then um, I became the brewing manager um, in around 2016, and this was about six months before uh, the takeover of Anheuser Busch um, with SAB Miller. If I look back on that exercise, probably the worst sort of six months in my professional career, but also the most valuable. There's like every emotion, every situation that a, that a team can go through, we went through in a very, very short period of time. So it's a lot of turmoil, a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty, but that in itself is like a little MBA in six months. All right. It's also so never waste a crisis, guys. It's terrible to be in it, but it's very, very powerful to get out of it and reflect back on it. Um, then I went into, into brewing consulting, um, looking at the Africa zone uh, for AB InBev at that time, managing KPIs, individual brewery performances throughout the continent. But then I soon realized that I really enjoy working with people and I enjoy working with the team. I enjoy implementing and developing strategy and I realized that I need to go back to that sort of role. And that's why I got an opportunity with Heineken again as a brewing manager um, working with the teams on the floor, and I must say, I, I really love it. So that's where I sort of found my purpose and, and my niche in life. And we're going to talk quite a lot about purpose. So just on the personal side, um, I'm married with the two little munchkins up there. That's a, a, a career in itself. Um, and like going from technical to management, you quickly realize that you always thought you knew what you should do, but you have no clue. You have absolutely no clue. But uh, yeah, a great joy in my life. Personally, I'm, I'm very addicted to, to purpose, and my purpose is I want to improve the state of our country and the lives, the lives of the people within it. 
And it, like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, so we'll get to that. And then there in the bottom right-hand corner, that's sort of my, my family at home. Um, well, not my family at home, my family at work. So you spend so much of your waking hours at work that the people that you work with does become your family. And it's, it's also then you, you have to manage that relationship in a sense that you can feel safe in this environment. Um, you can do your best, you can perform, you can shine, but there's still policies and rules and discipline and, and things. So it's quite a fine balance to get. But I must say, I, I really love my team. I'm so glad Dero is not here because he would give me so much nonsense for that with him being in the photo as well. But anyway, so let's go quickly through some career opportunities. Sorry, I know it's a bit small, but, but let me talk through it, right? So I'm going to explain sort of the route I took, but this is a general route in the brewery. This is not the only way. It's just to give you an idea of how things can practically work. So right up there in, in the left-hand corner is if you're a mechanical engineer or an industrial engineer, if that was your qualification, then you would typically become a packaging trainee, right, to enter the business. That's about a 24 to a 36-month traineeship. And guys, when you, when you get into any industry, so again, from my side, I started in the mining industry and then I started over in the brewing industry. I was shocked, stunned, and surprised on my first day at Kimberley Mines. I stepped in there. You know, I was looking for my, my office and, you know, air conditioning and everything like that. They gave me a set of overalls and a shovel, and they put me on shift. My first Christmas Eve um, in, in my working life, I spent digging out a conveyor at 12 o'clock at night. And even though, again, in that moment, a little bit of a crisis moment, didn't really enjoy it, but that was some of the most valuable experience of my life. All right. This is also where graduates tend to to make big mistakes, all right? Take this with a pinch of salt, but it, it is quite often that we see that graduates come into the business with a major sense of entitlement. I am a, a chemical engineer. Surely you cannot expect me to hose down a floor, or surely you cannot expect me to do this. Guys, I, I, I do understand that sense of you've worked for so long to obtain this qualification, but you must understand, I'm gonna repeat this a couple of times, the qualification that you will soon have in your hands is not a guarantee on life. It's a key to open a door. Once that door has been opened, the key has been used, right? Since I got my first job, nobody has ever asked me again, what is my qualification? Right, <coughs> realize that. Open, use the key, open the door, and then grow from there on. All right, that's very, very important. I can tell you so many stories of um, graduates coming in and you give them a task or an assignment and, and they reply, so, yeah, no, I understand, but you know I have a master's, right? And it's like, okay, um, this is <laughs> it's gonna be tough. So uh, please take that. If you learn, take anything out of that today, is that use that key and then grow to the next step. It's not a guarantee. All right, but getting back to the, uh, the diagram, you then would typically become a packaging trainee. That would involve you working through the technical aspects of a packaging line, really understanding the technology, um, the, the pros and the cons and everything around it and then you will also work on shift. The reason for that is you cannot be a successful manager or a successful team leader if you do not truly understand the intricacies of what's going on on the shop floor. This is not only a general failure that we see sort of in, in, the, in the graduate programs, but later on in life. If a manager comes in from another business and he doesn't understand what happens on night shift, we're all human beings, right? Two o'clock in the morning is not our brightest times. You must understand these things and how you manage your business around it. And that's why you have to go through this process to really, really understand this and what it takes from you. All right, and then if we go to the other side, so typically um, chemical engineering or um, industrial microbiology or any biology related degree can then go into a brewing traineeship. Very much similar to packaging. Um, you're gonna go in, you're gonna learn all the aspects of brewing, expect it to write and pass the IBDs, also expect to work some time on shift. So you really know how the brewery works from A to Z. Very, very in-depth, very practical, very, very good training, all right. Um, on the micro side, if you do qualify as a microbiologist or industrial microbiologist or analytical chemist or anything like that, the path is general that you go into the laboratory and you start off um, as a lab technician, all right, doing analysis and everything like that. So then you can go to the next step for brewing and packaging would be like a team leader sort of role, leading a shift team 
and this would be then your your first exposure to this what i was talking about that you no longer touch your own results other people are responsible for it and you have to manage them and the lab is probably going to something like a senior lab tech or anything like that where you later go on to um, a specialist in that category where on the brewing side you can potentially become an area manager a brewer, uh, or your know, area manager possibly a brewmaster um, uh, what I did say a senior technologist and then at that sort of level you then get exposed to the next level of management which is sort of a, a brewing manager packaging manager quality manager sort of role so in this transition between those two white layers that I had there it goes from about there's it goes from about 90% technical to 20% technical 10% management to 90% management all right a big thing that I struggled with when I was at university is that, that I convinced myself that I'm not good with people and I don't want to be a manager, I want to be technical. And then everyone said, okay, then this is the route for you. Guys, even if you're going to reach as a development, there's no such thing as working in a business without needing management skills. You need to manage your team, you need to manage your stakeholders, you need to manage the partners around you, you need to manage your customers, all right? So it's also very critical that you start developing these skills now. You guys are sitting here are already on the forefront of that because in the teams you have here now, you are managing suppliers, you're building relationships, you're managing team members, all right? Do not neglect that aspect of it and how important it is for your career forward. The more you pick up now, the better it will be for you going forward, but definitely heading in the right direction. It's also at this sort of level where you then have to decide um, do I want to continue down a purely management role, right, which then is that next role there we will become a plant manager and then a supply chain director or someone like that, which is purely management. Do you, you move away from seeing the brewery to never seeing it, but you're being held accountable for what comes out of the brewery, okay. You can go that route or you can go a more technical route, so research and development, project management, everything like that. But I do want to remind you that there's no such thing as no management experience or no management skills required. Everything does require it. So that's sort of the general route. Um, if you want to talk to, to Dero specifically, Dero came through brewing as well, up to sort of a brewing manager level. Then he went to world-class manufacturing manager. Mike, who is here with us as well, is a quality manager. He came from a project, uh, project uh, origin we did a lot of projects, project management in, in various countries and then moved into quality to get to know operations. Okay. Guys, this, this is a very sort of condensed summary of, of what a path could look like. All right. There's lots of other things you can do. There's lots of other opportunities. It's just to give you sort of a feel for what you can possibly get into and what you can possibly expect and experience. So any questions around this? I see a lot of nodding heads. I don't know if it's from sleep or agreement, <laughs> but <laughs> yes. uh, I know a lot of us are pretty much doing some side other things. Um, I wanted to know that if we're trying to like pretty much branch into this, does things like this count as the work experience to pretty much get us to branch in to whatever that we need to do and probably have to do something like an MBA as well. So is that possible? Uh, le let me see if I understand your question. So if you're looking to get into an industry, things like this, like the InterVarsity Brewing Competition will tell me as a possible hiring manager that you have experience in, in operating within a team, you have experience of the brewing industry, the quality aspects within it, and you're obviously passionate about it. Yes, right. and we could have yeah, been yeah, and I have things like biochemistry, microbiology, and yeah, some yeah. biotechnolo bi biotech um, experience, but still wanna pretty much jump into this side, but maybe I did um, bacteriology as my honors or something mm. like that. Do you think that um, it is still possible to pretty much branch into that, or should I pretty much step back and start from there? So it, it, it depends, it won't hurt, right? S but it depends where you wanna end up, what your end goal is. So maybe if you wanna talk really more specifics about it, we can talk about it afterwards, but it won't hurt. Okay. Your question around the, the MBA, my personal experiences, you, you need 
um, management experience to really add value in, in an MBA environment. So I would lay it off to like a 28, maybe even 30 or something like that. So you can really, you know, talk with these guys and, and leverage their experience. Okay. All right. But let's, we'll, we'll talk later more specifics around your okay. question. Thanks. Anyone else? All good. Happiness. Okay, guys. So now we're going to move into the aspect where I was asked, you know, does university prepare you for life? And, and also just a couple of things that's very near and dear to me and very important. Mm -hmm. The first thing is, guys, you need, to, you need to find your purpose. Making money is not a purpose, it's a consequence. All right, very important. If you guys, the guys come for an interview, no, what do you want out of life? No, I want to make money. So, okay, great, thanks. Um, realize that, it, that it's up to you to find this purpose and drive it. And I love this diagram because it's really, it's an interjection between what you love, what you love, where your strengths are, what the world needs, and what you get paid for. All right. Those four things are quite critical to find that, that happy medium, that purpose in the middle. And if you find this, this purpose, that'll be the thing that drives you. It'll unfortunately be the thing that keeps you up at 2 o'clock in the morning because you're so excited to go and implement this idea. But it will be the thing that carries you through when um, your boss is on your neck. It will be the thing that carries you through if you have to work on a project till 2 in the morning. And all of those times, that, that will carry you through. I can honestly tell you from my experience, if I didn't have a passion and, and a purpose, then I wouldn't have lost it, you know, through many times. COVID is one of them. The, the takeover that we mentioned just now is the other one. So that's, that's very important to have. And it's a very deep and difficult question to go and ask yourself. But I really do recommend that you sit down and you try and, and, and figure it out. Um, you really need this. Life, life can be tough and this will it'll get, that definitely help carry you through. We already spoke about this, but I just want to reiterate, your qualification is a one-off. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying it doesn't matter. It gives you a key to open a door. And what you do from there on depends on you. All right. Guys, there's, there's a lot of people when, when I studied, it was, it was obviously quite a different time, but they said, yeah, no, I just need to get this degree. Then I'm, then I'm set. Then I'm sorted. And we quickly realized it doesn't work like that. All right. So very, very, very critical point. And then, guys, invest in yourself. So once you've opened this door and you're learning on, on going forward, the biggest investment you can make to yourself is, is time, right? Time to reflect, time to study, time to learn more, time to grow, all right? A lot of the guys get to this, this, this sort of initial stages of their career, um, and they're like, okay, I'm doing my job from 8 to, to half past 5. But they don't invest that additional time to really learn about the business, to really drive the way forward, to really do that, uh, you know, the extra mile that helps you grow in your career. Invest that time in yourself. I guarantee you it will pay back handsomely. All right. And then, guys, mindfulness. So mindfulness to me was a very strange concept, so like in, in, in my mid-30s, but it's really brilliant if you get hold of it. Know your strengths and your weaknesses. Continuously assess your opportunities on a daily basis. Did I handle this the best I could today? Could I have gotten more out of it? Could I have learned more? And access, and, and through that process, you'll realize that success is based on turnaround time on learning. So I have Serena Williams in the top there. The difference between Seri someone like Tiger Woods, Serena Williams, um, Elon Musk, Max Verstappen, all those guys, they all made mistakes. But their reflection and learning and implementation of correction of those or mistakes are the best in what they do. That's why they are the best. We all start off relatively the same, right? Not all of us commit to that process of saying, this went wrong, how am I going to fix it, how am I going to implement it quickly? How do I strive to become better? That's what those guys do exceptionally well. And it takes a lot of commitment and bravery, right? It sucks to be told that you suck, but it's so valuable, right? You guys are going to go through this process this evening. I, I'm sure there's going to be some you know, big questions. Why did the judges say this? Guys, take that on board. Learn invest, grow, all right? And then always stay hungry to learn. Always stay hungry to learn. Observation, self-reflection, and experience, all right? You will never be totally there, right? You always have to keep growing, keep doing it at. And especially when it comes to leadership, that thing of keep growing and keep learning is absolutely crucial, right? So there's a saying that, that not, all, um, read, not all readers lead but all leaders read. I hope I got that right. 
Oops, didn't see it. Got messed it up. All right. And then the world is your classroom, guys. If you look at the leadership behaviors around the world, President Zelensky from Ukraine, man, that guy was a comedian, um, what, two years ago. Now he's leading probably one of the bravest um, counter assaults in, in our lifetime. It's, it's tremendous what he's doing. At the same time, you see someone like Liz Trust, who just resigned a couple of days ago, you know, came into to, uh, her position as prime minister, a lot of comments and everything on previous leaders, 45 days, you have to say, sorry, I, I can't do this. Imagine that, the, 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 you know, so if you think to that contrast in leadership between what Liz Trust went through in a normal econ economical, political environment versus what Zelensky is going through, and he refuses to quit and he refuses to leave. Man, that's, it's worlds apart, right? So interesting. And then on the other, s other hand, you look at someone like Malala at such a young age, taking the stance that she did and that sort of leadership. So guys, there's no, there's no position, there's no authority, there's no nothing that gives you this leadership. It's your way and your perception of life and how you grow and how you learn these things. Okay, so those are the four things that for me and, and my career that have really added value and what I've also seen from others and can definitely add value to you. Guys, if you want to talk about it more, please come and see me. I can talk about this for days, um, but I don't want to stand between you and lunch. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I think lastly, a, a huge... Um, thank you from from my side. So as I told you guys, I'm obviously a, a relatively young parent. Um, growing up in South Africa, my heart is definitely African. But you look at the country and load shedding and water and the, you know all those things. You <laughs> you get it, it it tears at you. You know knowing that you have a family to provide for and people to care for. But I must say through the intervarsity brewing and the students that we've met and the resilience that you guys have shown, there's nothing wrong. We're on the right path. You guys are the future and we will win. So please stick it out. Please keep doing what you're doing. Keep growing. We're on the right road. Thank you, guys. We, we can have one or two questions if you guys want. Yeah, I knew that was cheesy. <laughs> yes. You stated that you have a huge or large profession and that you have had many jobs along the way. Are there any skills that you have had to relearn or reapply in new ways along the way? Yeah, that's a very interesting question and definitely. Um, what, what, what was very interesting for me as, as my career developed, the, the people who managed me came from a different era where, your, where uh, a critical skill set was remembering information. So you had these guys at central office and you say, you ought to build a brewery, it costs this many million, blah, 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 if you add that, they, they had these numbers in their heads. And then sort of our generation came in and was a really sort of the first wave of internet and knowledge being available at your fingertips with a consequence of, of, you don't have to remember these numbers anymore. So these guys found it difficult to manage guys like us and we found it difficult to relate. The point in that story is that it moved from a, an accumulation of knowledge as a key skill um, in, in your job, to the ability to relearn very quickly. So that's very critical. So when, 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 I, when I became a manager, I quickly realized that I cannot, of course we all go back to our strengths, I cannot fall back on my technical skills, right? I have to learn how to manage this person. So you have to learn to leave that and focus on the other side of it. When I went into consultancy, it was, again, it's, listen, I cannot just rely on managing these people. I need to have the data. to. So that became more of a data mining thing. And how can I most efficiently find the correct data to have the right conversations with directors in certain countries and things like that? So that, that ability to, to analyze and relearn and readjust your approach, agility in general, is critical. Thank you.